The Nine Network is working in partnership with organizations across our region to build a healthy community by addressing critical issues and connecting people with the resources and information they need. Visit ninenet.org slash health for more information. It was actually quite a while ago when we decided we would do a program about the online health insurance marketplace. And we figured we'd give this key feature of the Affordable Care Act, oh, about a month to get up and running and then see what there was to talk about. We had no idea. So join us tonight as we take a look at what's happening, what's being talked about in Washington and Jefferson City, and at the story of one young man who in his own small way is at the very center of what this is all about. Nine's health coverage is supported in part by the Missouri Foundation for Health. There's plenty of disagreement, plenty of confusion about the Affordable Care Act, AKA Obamacare, but the law is at a critical time right now in the effort to get as many uninsured Americans, and that's about 15% of the population, some kind of health coverage. A key part of that, the online health insurance marketplace, healthcare.gov. And as we know, the opening of that has been a pretty bumpy ride. When the October 1st launch rolled around, healthcare organizations, clinics, and centers, they were ready to help. Trained navigators were standing by for the calls. Um, like I said, we're geared up, we're ready to start taking calls and to meet, be meeting with people if, if they need to do that. Workshops were being held to explain and to guide and to help people find out if they had to buy insurance, if they could buy insurance, the penalty if they didn't buy, and of course, the price if they did. And most people are going to qualify for some kind of help paying for that service. And people were interested. So I need health, health care because I had to drop my insurance because I lost my job. The problem was... There were plenty of glitches on day one. When many went to the federal website, healthcare.gov, to learn more, they often saw a screen that read, please wait. We have a lot of visitors... But that wasn't the lead story on the day of the launch. This was... The effects of the shutdown were widespread and immediate. The congressional stalemate, the government shutdown, the debt ceiling argument, the failed attempt to stop Obamacare. Much of the Affordable Care Act story since October 1st has been political dysfunction and the nays are 46. And technical malfunction. We have a lot of visitors on the site right now. Please stay on this. So table. tonight, the now what? And for most people, the next step is nothing. There are exceptions, which we'll talk about, but generally speaking, if you get health insurance at work or through Medicaid or Medicare, you don't have to do anything. That doesn't mean that we won't all in some way or another be affected by the Affordable Care Act down the road, but it's too early to add up the winners and the losers. So this next story by Anne Marie Berger was not intended to be a best case or a worst case scenario, an argument for or against Obamacare. We just wanted to follow somebody who didn't have health coverage into the online marketplace, and we didn't have to go very far to find him. My name is Seth Donnelly, I'm 25, and I'm a freelance videographer, TV production. Seth works on a freelance basis for various television productions, including a few at the Nine Network, but his main gig is working as a drummer. Yeah, I started playing drums uh, in high school, and um, it was just for fun. Played in bands here and there, and never making money or anything. Then I got in Dancehall Riot and uh, realized that I could actually make a decent living playing drums. We've been together for like four and a half years. I put a lot of money and effort into drums. Uh, I mean, I haven't, I don't have a weekend life anymore. I play shows every weekend. And people think that, oh, you're playing drums, you're having fun, you're playing. And it is fun sometimes, but I mean, it's a job. It's every week and every Friday, Saturday, I'm working from 5 p.m. till 2 in the morning, playing drums, getting loaded up, loaded out every weekend. Um, I've been working at this really hard for a long time and uh, finally starting to get there. Like many self-employed Americans, Seth does not have health insurance. And why, why is that? Uh, I can't afford it. 
I'm, a, I'm in a position where I don't, you know, my two jobs, being a musician and a freelancer, I don't have benefits. I don't have people offering me anything. While not having health insurance hasn't been an issue, Seth's a pretty healthy guy with the exception of the occasional cold, he does have his concerns. Uh, I mean, I have family that have, there uh, have been in accidents and not had health insurance and are going to be forever in debt. So I mean, there's always that, that's, that fear of if I get in a really bad accident or something like that, I'm not covered. So Seth is going shopping at the health insurance marketplace in hopes there is some kind of plan he can afford. Available to those under the age of 30 or those who meet the financial hardship exemption is the catastrophic plan. It's a safety net. If he's in an accident or blows out a knee, he'd be covered. This plan offers the lowest premiums with the highest deductible. As the plans improve, premiums increase and out-of-pocket costs decrease. The bronze plan covers 60% of all health care costs. The silver plan, 70%. Moving up to gold, you'll find the highest monthly premiums, but lowest out-of-pocket costs with 80% covered. There's also a platinum plan, but that's not available in Missouri at this time. So here's the deal. All plans must meet a minimum standard of coverage. And there's a few big changes. You can't be denied because you have a pre-existing health condition, and you won't be charged more because you're a woman. However, you will be charged more if you're a smoker. So if Seth does buy insurance through the marketplace, he's not buying insurance from the government, rather private insurance companies, and he'll receive a bill from them just like he does his cell phone provider. Uh, I kept trying to log on, I would get to pretty much the same point every time and it would just freeze up. I mean, if it's especially something like this where it's, hey, you have to have this and you have to do this now and this is how you have to do it, but then it doesn't work, it's like, okay, well, why bother? Because if he makes enough money and doesn't buy insurance, Seth will pay a $95 penalty on tax day and that fine will increase in the coming years. But that is a choice he can make. We asked Washington University health economist Professor Timothy McBride how Seth's decision plays in the bigger picture. You can't just have sick people in the pool because then it'll be too expensive. That's what economists would call a selection problem. Or, you know, it's a death spiral is what sometimes it's called. So you need the healthy people to balance out the sick people on a year-to-year -year basis. Seth will only find two insurance companies offering marketplace plans for Missouri. Other states have more choices, and McBride says that could happen in Missouri down the road. You know, the insurance company is going to watch 2014 to see how it rolls out. I think they're worried about the uncertainty about it, the kind of things we talked about earlier, about the worries about what the pool is going to look like, who's going to jump in. To keep consumers like Seth interested, healthcare.gov needs to be fixed. And three weeks into the launch of the marketplace, President Obama said it would be. We are doing everything we can possibly do to get the websites working better, faster, sooner. A few days later, we headed to a community health center in Union, Missouri to see if anything had changed. Kreider Health Center serves a lot of the working poor and uninsured in suburbs and rural areas in four counties. In the Union, Missouri Center, we met up with Wendy Schrader. So your job is to sign people up? Correct. Have you done it yet? I have been unable to enroll anybody at this point in time. For lack of interest? Not for lack of interest. People are absolutely ready to sign up. They, a lot of our medical patients do not have insurance. A majority of them don't. You said you've had a lot of interest. Have you had a lot of people say, I don't like Obamacare, I want nothing to do with this? Yes. Very polarizing topic. Politically polarizing, but frustrating for those who've come in wanting to buy health fingers. insurance and for those trained to help them do that. After three weeks of website problems and a couple of days after the president promised to fix them, Wendy Schrader was actually starting to make some headway. It looks good right now. I actually was just kind of 
signing on to see if I could. And this is exactly where you want to be able to get to on healthcare.gov. This Patient. is further than you might have gotten a couple of weeks ago, yeah? Oh, absolutely. Now, I, we didn't know if this was because the website was being fixed or because fewer people were trying to get online or because she was just lucky. But she was finally finding what every online shopper is looking for. Well, now I can, I, I'm copying and pasting screenshots of the plan prices. <laughs> Because I want to be able to tell people, you know, some of the deductibles and premiums and things. I'm actually able to get in there right now, so it's pretty exciting. Schrader already knows there is a demand for affordable health coverage in this community. She also knows that some low-income people are going to be turned away because under the Affordable Care Act, they actually make too little to buy on the marketplace. They were supposed to be covered by Medicaid expansion, but that didn't happen in Missouri and those people fall into a health insurance no-man's land called the coverage gap. We'll talk more about that in a bit, but first let's check back in to see how Seth is doing. A week after Seth tried shopping on the online marketplace and failed, he decided to go at it from a different route. Uh, I just got to work and getting ready to start my shift and before so I'm going to call this 1-800 number and try to get some health care. Uh, I'm calling about getting some health sh insurance. And what state are you calling from? Missouri. To set up an account in the marketplace and determine what, if Thank any, you. discounts an applicant is eligible for, one must provide a social security number or document numbers for legal immigrants, employer and income information, policy numbers for any current health insurance plans, and if applicable, a completed employer coverage tool a document that can be downloaded at healthcare.gov. Seth spent about 20 minutes on the phone with an operator submitting his application. Once it's processed, he'll receive an email explaining his health insurance options. And for Seth, just getting the ball rolling is a step in the right direction. Thank you for calling the marketplace and you have a good uh, rest of the day. I did it. We're here in the studios of St. Louis Public Radio because we want to talk a little bit about some of these latest developments with a couple of journalists who've been covering the Affordable Care Act. Tara Kulosh from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Sally Altman from the St. Louis Beacon. Sally, a lot of stories out there, a lot of information out there. Do we really have a sense in Missouri, St. Louis area, how this rollout is going, how people are responding to it, whether they're using it? Only anecdotally, Jim. Um, there are no numbers that are available either for the state or for the metropolitan area on how many people have tried to enroll through websites. We do know that um, the navigators um, have had a number of queries and have helped people both over the telephone and in person. I know some states who have set up their own exchanges may be having more, more success. Missouri is on the federal exchange. Um, and so we're stuck with how the federal exchange is working. Tara, do you have a sense at all? What, what are you hearing? Uh, basically similar things that navigators are having some issues getting on the sites. They have maybe a few a week that they can get people onto the site. Um, some people are using paper applications now, which is a lengthy process that really isn't recommended. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the sort of story of the week surrounding this. The president said if you have health insurance and you're happy with it, you get to keep it. Now people are actually, some people are actually getting notices that they're going to lose that. Can you guys explain where that fits into the big picture? About 5% of Americans get their health insurance coverage through individual policies. Um, these individual policies in many cases have been canceled. And the principal reason for this is because the coverage in those policies um, now have to include what are called essential health benefits. Yeah, they don't meet the minimum standards, That's right? right. Set by also, law. another reason that some of these policies are ending is just because it doesn't seem economical to the insurance company anymore. People are thinking that they're targeting people who have pre-existing conditions, who are unhealthy, that they're only canceling their plans. But these insurance companies have to cancel, so, like it's a block of customers. It's They have to remove everyone from that plan. It's not specific people. It's, it's one plan that they're getting rid of. I, I think um, what people are neglecting to point out is 
um, that the new coverage that will be available to these uh, individuals is one, better coverage, uh, includes more benefits, uh, fewer out-of-pocket costs, and much more importantly, uh, many of these individuals will um, qualify for some kind of subsidy on the marketplace exchange. No easy conclusions on this that we're going to continue to watch this. You know, in addition to the introduction of the online marketplace, the other way that the Affordable Care Act was supposed to get people health coverage was through Medicaid expansion. But that was the part of the law the Supreme Court said, no, you can't force that on states. That's their decision. So Illinois said yes to Medicaid expansion. Missouri said no. But that doesn't mean it's a done deal. It does not mean it won't come up again. Some recent history. A year ago, just after he was reelected, Democratic Governor Jay Nixon said expanding Medicaid was... It's the smart thing to do, and it's the right thing to do. Nixon said it would be good for health care, would create jobs, and it would be good for the economy. The state eventually would have to pick up 10 percent of the expansion cost, but for the first three years, the federal government would pay it all. House Speaker Tim Jones, a Republican from Eureka, wasn't buying it. I completely disagree that this is free money. It's not the right way to go. Uh, we need to look at more innovative solutions. And with Republican majorities in the House and the Senate, Medicaid expansion died. However, there was this. What I would like us to look at, like we did a few years ago in the state under Governor Blunt, is Medicaid transformation. We're going to start today with testimony by... Jones appointed Representative Jay Barnes, a Jeff City Republican, to chair the interim committee on Medicaid transformation. And he has been holding hearings this fall with plans to introduce Medicaid transformation legislation in the 2014 session. And the ultimate goal is to make Missouri's Medicaid system the most market-based Medicaid system, not just in the country today, but in the entire history of the federal program. And I think the way you do that is you figure out a way to incentivize everybody in the Medicaid system to think like consumers. Other states have worked with the Obama administration on finding a way to get the Medicaid expansion money and using it on their own terms. The Arkansas plan uses federal money to help people buy health coverage on the online marketplace instead of just putting them on Medicaid. A Missouri model could do something similar. I'm going to check your blood pressure a couple of times. But if a state plan does not extend health coverage to enough people, the administration could turn it down and wouldn't send the money. Well, one thing I think that the federal administration ought to be mindful of is they can't just talk about being flexible with alternative ideas. They actually have to show flexibility when you get conservative ideas to deliver health care to people who otherwise can't afford it. But nothing at all happens if the legislature turns down a proposed Missouri model. And Barnes says there has to be flexibility in Jefferson City as well. We're pushing the envelope with true Medicaid transformation, and we have to get a waiver from the federal government. I don't think that waiver is ever coming unless there is something in the deal uh, for the other side. Missouri's Medicaid program is on the fiscally conservative or stingy side compared to other states serving primarily children and the disabled. It means low-income, uninsured adults can fall into that coverage gap. There have been other federally funded programs that have been providing something of a safety net. Rob Friend is with the Regional Health Commission. We've done a great job over 10 years um, building a fairly strong, robust community health center network in St. Louis. But maybe not for long. A state is free to turn down new Medicaid expansion money, but it doesn't mean it will keep getting the old money. Funding for the Gateway to Better Health program, which right now helps a lot of the uninsured, has been extended for a year. After that, it could dry up. So we've got to figure out a way to replace it, or our providers have to cut back. And the first that will cut back is those that serve the most vulnerable. Hospitals are also losing federal money they used to get for treating people who couldn't pay, so-called dish payments. And this could hit smaller rural hospitals particularly hard, and there's concern some might have to close down. The plain and simple math is the Affordable Care Act is pulling 
hundreds of millions of dollars a year out of Missouri to go pay for Medicaid expansion coverage. It's not, it's not just pay. the money we're not getting, right. it's money that's being it's pulled being, out, you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. The Missouri legislature has a lot of members who don't like raising taxes, don't like Obamacare, don't like entitlement programs. So the question for Representative Barnes is, what would they like, or at least what would they be willing to reluctantly vote yes on? Well, the votes are definitely there for fundamental Medicaid transformation in the state of Missouri. Um, what that means or how, whether that can get across a finish line, I, I can't tell you today. Well, when we start talking about what might or might not happen in Jefferson City, we like to turn to the reporters who do the weekly podcast, Politically Speaking, from the St. Louis Beacon, Joe Manis, Jason Rosenbaum, and from St. Louis Public Radio, Chris McDaniel. So, Representative Barnes, Joe, is working on a piece of legislation about Medicaid expansion. Any chance of this actually coming up for serious debate in the 2014 session? There's possibility for two reasons. One, you've, one, you've got the 2014 elections, and depending whether or not the Affordable Care Act little snafus in Washington get cleared out, um, there may be more public, public paying closer attention to this. B, the Medicaid expansion is very important in rural areas. Uh, there's increasingly some rural hospitals who have been signaling to some legislators that they're either going to have to cut back or close. So increasingly I've noticed that there are some more legislators in the House and State Senate who are starting to pay attention to this from what they're hearing in their districts. So I'm not sure if they're ready to vote in favor of it, but I think they're going to be giving more serious look at it. There are a few key things to take away. One, that the healthcare industry, they employ a lot of people. So they're an important people to appease. They also lobby very heavily. The healthcare industry in the past two years has given about a quarter of a million dollars in lobbyist gifts. They're important. So this is something that they really want to see happen, and this is something that they've been fighting for. First of all, there's the whole philosophical objection to the Affordable Care Act that is put forth by Republicans, i.e., the federal government is not going to hold up their end of the bargain in terms of this match. Plus, but, there's, a, and, and one legislator said, I like Medicaid, but not for healthy people. Exactly. Representative Barnes said, if, uh, the Obama administration says it wants to be flexible, it needs to be flexible. It would seem to me a lot of that willingness to be flexible will be dependent on how well this website actually Correct. starts working. Correct. I was going to say, I mean, I, I expect the website to eventually be fixed and functional and this problem to be into the future. But I saw opinion polls today that the opinion of the Affordable Care Act has gone down in recent weeks, even after the government shut down. And a lot of it is because of these situations and glitches and problems with the website and with certain people's insurance being finagled or whatnot. So it'll remain to be seen in January or February where those are still issues and whether if they are and the public doesn't really see the Affordable Care Act as, as something that needs to go forward of whether that affects Medicaid too. He's absolutely right. If things start being smoother, particularly when the Missouri legislature goes back in a session in January and everything, all the news is that, oh, everything's fixed, it's hearts and flowers. People are finding good Pe deals. Yeah, right. people are finding good deals. Then you can see where it would have an impact on the Medicaid expansion debate. Again, there are two different issues, but they're linked. And if for some reason there's still problems and uh, the federal government's still under fire and there's still all these controversies, then he's right. I think then it becomes less popular, less pressure, even though they'll still have the pressure from the hospitals and the business community, the public pressure plays a big role in this as well. So not a done deal or dead issue in the legislature, maybe not this year, but... There will be talk this year, just maybe not action. But that's all down the road. Anne-Marie Berger returns to the problem at hand and to the person that this is really all about. All right, Seth, so it's been a week or so since you called the health insurance marketplace on the phone. Where are you in the process of getting health insurance? Uh, the same place I have been. Nothing's developed. I haven't gotten any information. So you haven't been contacted? Hey, your app application is processing nothing? Mm -mm. You still want health insurance, so how's this waiting game? Uh, it's a bummer. I want, I don't know, I didn't think I'd be able to afford it in my 20s at all. And now that I, it's right there, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious. 
to figure out if I'm going to be actually be able to afford it. Seth is one in about 800,000 uninsured Missourians, many of whom share the same frustrations about the marketplace. But there are people out there who can help. A navigator is somebody who has been trained by the federal government. Jeremy Malarski is the navigator program manager for Primaris, one of two federally funded organizations to offer one-on-one -on -one assistance for people shopping in the Missouri marketplace. And they have their work cut out for them. This is not work for shrinking lilies, no. There have been several challenges along the way. Each week seems a different one than the last, but we have been providing the most service we possibly can in this environment. I think we have been helping people. Malarski defines a navigator as someone who is federally qualified and has the certificate to show for it. And keep in mind... Navigator services are free, so people need to know if they are going to somebody who calls themselves a navigator and asks for money for those services, that is not really a navigator and is probably something not legitimate. Besides meeting with a navigator, Malarski also encourages people, like Seth, to use an online calculator. And it can tell Seth about how much help he can get in paying for those monthly premiums, based on his income, his family size, whether he's a tobacco user or not. And using those two pieces of information, he can see where he stands. So go ahead and plug in your stuff. So Seth gave the calculator found on the Kaiser Family Foundation website a try. Is that it? Mm-hmm. So down here it gives you your results. Okay, it comes out to like $96 a month, which is way more affordable than I thought it would be. I was expecting at least a couple hundred bucks. You're not going to be able to sign up for it until the kinks yeah. get worked out on the website. After we're done talking here, are you actually going to follow up with this? Now that I know it's a realistic thing, I'm definitely going to get it. Yeah. Now I will definitely go skydiving, without a doubt. Probably get some, uh, some like, some drumsticks that shoot flames. Clearly there are a lot of things we didn't get into tonight, and there was a point when we thought, we're going to need a bigger show. But we'll wrap things up for now. But on Thursday night at 9, Casey Nolan will tackle this topic on Stay Tuned. That's bound to generate a lot of lively discussion. We hope you can join that on Facebook and Twitter. Because a week from tonight, we'll be addressing a lot of those questions and comments on a live community conversation. So thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jim Kircher, and we'll see you next time. Nine's health coverage is supported in part by the Missouri Foundation for Health.